Good. How are you doing? Very good, mate. Very good. Very pleased. We've finished a new album now, which is being mixed in um, mixed in LA at the moment, which is good. And then uh, we did one headline one festival in, in England, and then came straight out here. So you know, when's this the album coming out? Probably about September. Oh, yeah, it's called really Living the Dream, yeah, but we, it's, it's got to be mixed and then the record company needed a big lead up time and all that stuff, you know. So. Right, but all the recording is done. All done, mate, yeah, yeah. How's it sound? We did it in 19 days, I think. Yeah. That's old Sounds school. great. Sounds That's great. It's really school. good, yeah. Oh, it's all old school. No one, we no are one old school, that man. <laughs> we are old school. <laughs> that, that's true, right? We get in there and play as a band, you know, and record as a band. We don't, oh, we don't do it individually. Yeah, most of it's just, you know, there, the backing tracks is as we do it. Really? Yeah. Have you always done it? And without a click track. Really? Yeah. Always like that? That's, that's the way we do it. That's where we are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, a band, we're a band in the true sense of the word. You're yeah. a rock band. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no kidding, right? That's and it's called Living the Dream. And called Living the Dream, yeah. 49 years after you started, yeah. you're still living the dream. Well, it's not quite 49, it's probably about 47, but, you know, we were kind of late, late 69, and then it sort of, we took the name on in 1970. Can you believe it? Yeah. 47. Nah, nah, yeah. mate, can't believe it at all. I'm like really it? happy about it. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story. 1983, I went to my very first rock concert in Edmonton. Oh, yeah, yeah? It was Def Leppard. Oh, yeah, oh, cool. My very first rock concert was Def Leppard with you guys opening. Oh, but you know, yeah, cool. So you were the very first band I ever saw live. Oh, really? <laughs> How's that? And Def Leppard was second. Well, you know, it was, uh, it was one of those moments, I, I'm sure you've had them too, when you, you know, the first time you see a concert where it just kind of changes your life. Yeah, 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 it's, just, right? it's that sort of moment, isn't it? Yeah. Right, and even though I had never heard of you guys at the time, I was like, wow, look at these guys, this is... <laughs> <laughs> what a life this must be. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. want to play guitar. That was a good time because, you know, we had a Bombadog, uh, called a Bombadog out, and that went top 40. And, you know, the, with um, MTV doing the rock videos, we were on part of that, and high rotation eight times a day and stuff. So it was a very exciting time, you know. And then to be with Def Leppard, of course, another English band who were the biggest since they sliced bread, weren't they, at, the, at, they at, at that particular time? At that point, right? They were and huge, yeah. So They were big fans it was great. of the as well. So I, oh, very much so, yeah. yeah, yeah. So Phil Connolly used yeah. to, to follow me around and stuff, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Out, we come from the same stuff. same town in, oh, in London right? called Walthamstow, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> you still keep in touch with those guys? Um, I do with Joe Elliott quite a lot, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. They've done well. They've done well, and they're still doing well. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go, I, I want to go way back to the very beginning, because yep. I, I love this question every time I do an interview. Why did you pick up the guitar all those years ago? Um, it was very strange, actually. I was, there wasn't a lot of music on radio in, in England at all, you know, rock music or anything of that ilk, you know, it was all very pop and all that stuff. Um, but somewhere along the line, I heard uh, um, Les Paul Mary Ford. Uh, you know, Les Paul, we mentioned the, the, the Les Paul guitar and his wife Mary Ford at the time. And I heard a little EP of that, and I quite liked that. I thought, well, that, that's, that's clever, that's good. And then I started listening to Django Reinhardt and Taufan and Barley Kessel and all those sort of players, and uh, West Montgomery, and I, I really got, I really liked the voicings of, of the chords and things they were using at the time. And so I was, I was very into jazz guitar first before anything else. I think that's probably where I got my technique from. Um, so yeah, and then I, I had lessons for a very short period of time for about three or four months because the guy used to give me um, a lesson on a Saturday and I could play it by Saturday afternoon and I had to wait another week to get another lesson and I, I couldn't wait so right. I just used my ears and you, know, and, and you know I was like a sponge at that stage you know so right. but the, the, the teacher I had was, actually was the second guitarist to um, Django Reinhardt so it was another um, connection to that type of music you know, that genre of music and then the, then, then I saw I saw a band called Johnny Kidd and the Pirates and they had a um pop singer called Shaking All Over in England which was had a good guitar riff in it then I saw a band called Them with Van Morrison singing and they and players singing Baby Please Don't Go with another great riff in it so right. that kind of all hit me in you know then I then I kind of liked Buddy Holly and Eddie Cochran and got into the song side of thing you know, right. and suddenly just grew from there yeah. it seems kind of funny to go from that jazz background into what you play I mean, you, you guys were it was kind of a, it was kind of a natural progression to be honest. It's just, you know, yeah, because you know, my listening was 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 changed as much as my playing. You know, I was listening right. to the body orders and the, you know, 
and uh, listened to those sort of people, and they were they were inspiring me. Um, and there was a band, an instrumental band called The Shadows in England, that, that, um, and, and Hank Marvin being a guitarist, he was a very very clean, good good guitarist, you know, really really clever, great melodies and stuff, you know, and and, um, and that's kind of where I started turning the coin, if you like, <laughs> the that's jazzy really thing into that. Because I guess you guys are considered heavy metal, but... Well, that's like a journalistic term. We, we come out, we're just a rock band, mate. That's you know. That's yeah. thing to you, but... You know, because, you know, we've always just been a rock band, and, and I can't see it any other way, really, that, that with a love of melody. <laughs> well, yeah, that's You it. know, yeah, you yeah, don't always get a love of melody in metal, right. you know, so... Exactly. Um, the, the, the thing about your eye is we, we kind of touch on a few genres, you know, we're not, we're not afraid to pick up the guitar and be very folky or pick up a, or do a, a big hard driven riff thing like Gypsy which would be more mentally if you like and right. so we, we, we float in between all of it really when when you first started I read this you didn't want to do any covers you just wanted to do right. your own yeah, original yeah. stuff yeah um, does that make it more difficult to get into clubs and accept it well in the very very early when you're doing 21st birthday parties and rugby clubs and football clubs and and, and uh, you know, lots of parties and things and weddings and stuff. You just play anywhere, you know. And then you, you I tended to just do the twelve bar stuff at the time that that um, people sort of related to. I could never do all the top forty stuff. It just didn't appeal to me whatsoever. Yeah. And even to this day, I've never sat down and worked out a song of somebody else's. I can't do that. It's just not in my makeup because I don't want to play somebody else. I want to play mine. So right. yeah. So whenever I sit down, I just doodle until something interests me, and that starts to become a song. That's exactly it. I don't. I don't. People think you know. It's funny enough. You go. You go to parties and that. They get a guitar. And it's a bit of Mick. It's a guitar. And they expect you to be a jukebox. You know. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. And I don't. I don't play other people's music. You know? Right. Just play your own. So, so my stock answer is I'm, I'm Mick Box, not jukebox. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's fantastic. If um, I have to at a push, occasionally my wife she has you know, some people over. Um, I'll get out of a little. Music book with a load of songs in, and let someone choose it, and they all drunk and sing, and I'll play along with it. You know, play some chords. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not going to learn the actual songs. I hear you. I hear you. You know, I, doing my research, one thing I was amazed in was you guys were recording at least an album a year, sometimes two. Two in one year, yeah, in seventy two. Yeah, seventy two. I think seventy three yeah. had a couple as well. Yeah, um, it was an amazing creative output. What? How? <laughs> It was it was twofold really. I mean, we did have the creative force within the band to, to do that, but you know, the management were driving you mad. You know, the, the thing about I, I think people miss is that you know, when you first start out, somebody invests money in you, they want that money back, <laughs> so they're going to drive you to hell and back to get it. You know, so we were doing nine month tours and straight back in the studio and do another album, and another do another album and do another album you know because you know they drove you to the point where I mean in the end they got the money back you know a thousand fold but that's not the point by then you were, you were, you were burnt out well know? that was my next question though. Yeah. doesn't it burn you out yeah it certainly does yeah now is that what led like I, I don't know much about your personal side of things but is that what led at that time to all the drug and alcohol abuse absolutely and yeah drug? and we lost one uh, David Byron to alcohol we lost Gary Thane our bass player to drugs and a lot of it was because, you know, when you're, you're being driven that hard. And don't forget, in those days, I mean, and now we've got tour buses and things like that. In those days, there weren't tour buses. You drove everywhere. I mean, you did an eight-hour day before you even got on stage to do a day's work, you know. And then afterwards, you know, pack up and you go overnight, sleep in the back of a car. It's not very comfortable, you know. You know, we didn't have, we didn't have the luxury of the sleeper buses then, you know. So, or you were flying everywhere when you when you got really popular. So, every, you know, imagine every day, checking in, checking out, checking in, yeah, it was just a nightmare, you know. And so, put that together, all the hard work and the, the different countries you're playing in, it, 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 it pays its toll, you know. So those stories, those are true, those stories, the living in the van. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> I did the early days. For how long? Early days, I did it for about five years in the early days. Yeah, but not heap, but pre-heap. I was quite happy because I, the, we used to have these Wem columns uh, for our PA, and in the back I could lay on top of it because I was the smallest one. I fit in there. I put a blanket over me, and it was my bed every night. <laughs> oh my God! And we, you know, we used to put the money, money from the gig into the fuel 
tank to, to get to the next show again. And that's it? Yeah, that's it. And live, you live day by day, you know. But that's how you cut your teeth on it, you see. That's when, when, when you do get any rewards, you, you know, you, you, there's a substance and a foundation to it, rather than just turning up on your doorstep, you know. Right, and I guess it makes And you appreciate really, it so much more, you Well, know? that's it. You, yeah. You would know if you really want to do it. If you can survive that, you can survive anything. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And it also proves that you, you do have the passion to, to do that stuff, you know, and I think that's very important. You have to have that passion and drive, and, and it's no matter what was put in front of you, you are going to play, and that's it, you know. And after 40... Seven, four, I'm still with that still passion. Happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? In and abundance. Stage is the same as getting on stage in the 70s? In abundance, mate, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. You never get tired of it? No. How can you get tired of that? <laughs> well, like you said... I can show you many other jobs that would be very tiring. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, you know, well, you know, you know we're, in a very, the, uh, we're in an enviable position. You, know, you can't moan about it. It's great. Well, yeah, it is, but you do have the travel and the check-in. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of hard work involved and a lot of dedication, but, you know, um, that can apply to anyone in any job, isn't it, really? You know, but, hey, it's a nice place to be, mate. You see the world, you know, as well, you know. There you go. You know, so... It's so you're doing North America now. Yeah. Then you're off to Europe? No, then we go back to England for 10 days. Yeah. And we fly back out to America again. And we do from Dallas, Texas, over to the West Coast, the West Coast of Canada, and then fly straight from there to the show in Hamburg in Germany. Then we have a little bit of time off before we start the festival season. You guys are huge in Europe. You know, Germany's been very faithful to the band for, for years. Right. They're very loyal, you know, within the industry and the fans. Which is great, you know. So we've always had a big. I mean, we've had. My Lady in Black was number one there for six months and stuff like that. Yeah. So you know, you've kind of cut your your teeth in those areas, you know. <laughs> and we picked up two European Grammys for it. You know, they're called the Golden Lion Awards and stuff. You know, so. I read about that. Yeah. 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 yeah what year was that? Oh, mid mid seventies. Mid seventies. Yeah, yeah. Late late mid seventies. Yeah. So here we are, two thousand eighteen, a new album coming out. Mm, just kind of walk us through it. What's it? It's your eye heat. That's it. Like, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I can't say anything other than this is a natural extension to our last album, Outsider, and um, it's typical your eye heat. You know, we created a template back in 1970. We haven't changed it. There's no need to. You know, we've got hammered all with a one bar guitar, five part harmonies. You know, um, that's it. I mean, they 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 called us. Um, Years ago, the Beach Boys of Heavy Metal, so <laughs> so we use that as our trademark, and you know, that, that's the way we do it. <laughs> that's not a bad comparison. Beach Boys of Heavy Metal, I like it. <laughs> it was it was a great slogan. Yeah, that's awesome. So it's coming out in oh, September. September. Yeah. September 2018. Yeah. Living the dream. And that's why we named it that, because you know we are in fact we're still doing it. You know, when I'm still I was still doing what I was doing at 18. You know, at 70 years old. So. Who can complain? <laughs> it's a good question, right? Who can complain? Yeah. Yeah, seriously, you're living the life. Yeah. I live the life I want, which is, which is a lot of people don't do. I'm doing something I love, which a lot of people don't do. Most people do. A lot of people have to do a lot of jobs that they don't particularly like just to pay the bills. Yeah. You know, so I'm in an enviable position that I'm, I'm doing something I love. I never forget that. Before I wrap this up, I, know, oh, I read this today. 25 studio albums, 18 live albums, and 39 compilation albums. Is that? I think that's that's a, that's a a good estimate. Yeah, it's probably more than that to be honest. That is, like you said earlier, that is a serious output. It is, but you know, but you know, that's what we do. You know. We, it's nice being in a band that isn't creative, you know. But these days, you know, we were talking before, you're doing an album a year or two albums a year. These days yeah. it takes five, six years for a band to do an album, sometimes more. Yeah, and yeah, I know. Metallica, it's ten years because you know what, a lot of people don't think that there's any value in it, simply because, you know, the, 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 the income stream isn't there anymore from royalties and things. Right. And the fact that you, you go into the studio and you spend a stupid amount of money to make the best sound possible when people only hear it on mp3s <laughs> squashed down to right. nothing you know right. so you wonder why you spend that sort of money on it but you know why do you because the, there's a pride 
and it's what we do and what we love and that's what we, we believe is the correct thing to do. So we'll always do it. Like Whereas other bands don't. To you know. put into something it is, to you know, but you know, the, the rewards come when people hear it, they like it, and, you know, and then you, know, you, you, you continue touring it, you tour it for two years or whatever, 18 months. So we play game. concerts in 61 countries, so... 61 countries? Yeah, so we do get around the world, yeah. Yeah, yeah magic, isn't it? Yeah. Our <laughs> 61st country recently was in Dubai. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Have you been out to Korea? I lived in Korea for a bunch yeah, of years. Yeah, South Korea. Have you played Korea? Yeah. Nice. I never heard of it. It was unbelievable. Uh, it was a very strange experience because they were locked into screaming like the Beatles. So we come out and play a song and they're just screaming all the way through. They never stop, right? <laughs> they never, they never stop. Like, well, this is very unusual. I thought we flies were undone, you know. <laughs> well, it just shows you the, the, the fan base that he has got, you know, which is, which is just amazing, you know. And if we're quiet here, we're noisy over here. And if we're noisy over here, we're quiet here, you know. Right. Wow, that's and it keeps the band working a lot. So how long can you keep this going? As long as we've got a health mate, we'll be out there doing it. Because this is what we do. <laughs> now you're the only original member of the band. Yeah, life, yeah. But the rest of the guys have been in the band for... A long like, time. I mean, time. Phil and Bernie, a keyboard player and singer, have been with us for, since 1986. <laughs> it's a long time. It's longer than most people who are in the band. Well, anyway, yeah. and in yeah, bands. Right? Yeah, and Russ has been with us over ten years now. And Dave's coming up to five. So, um, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It's just gonna, you're just going to keep going. Oh, well, a new so album out, we're very excited, we're going to go and tour the world with it, and we'll do another album, and we'll just keep going. Just keep going? Yeah, yeah. Well, I wish you nothing but the best. Well, this thank is, you very uh, much, my happy this days. Is fantastic, <laughs> and thanks so much for the inspiration, man. Oh, that's concert. brilliant, mate. Oh, no worries. Even I'm, I'm pleased you did that, yeah. Even though I'd never heard of you guys before, and I was like, what the hell is this band doing in front of Def Leppard? I, it, it was one of those moments, you know? Oh, that's like, great. Wow, this is cool. Well, so, that's good news, mate. Yeah, All right, my friend. Happy show. days, eh? Thanks, thanks very much. Thank you, my friend.